The next storyteller is Lindsay Brown, and she's my neighbor. She lives on my street. We live on the dead end part of uh, uh, Erie Street, and um, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> so she works for a nonprofit uh, called Numana, and they package and distribute meals all over the world. Have you, any of your churches like put together where you you um, all put on those those funny hats? because your hair's got to be covered up and then you uh, package the meals so it's like a one step kind of, what was the hamburger helper thing, you know, except for this is, this is uh, all dried and all they have to do is add water. So that's pretty cool. So that's what Lindsay does. And I asked about hugs and she said that Weston, her husband, is the best hugger because his hugs make everything better. And then she turned to him, she goes, you know, we should hug more. <laughs> So this is Lindsay. Okay, this is a lot of fun and I'm really excited to be here and I was doing okay until you said my name. Um, it's difficult for me to share stories about my experiences with all, without talking about my faith and um, just my relationship with Jesus. So much of who I am and what I do is um, moved and shaped and formed by uh, who God is forming me to be, and really all of me if I'm willing to submit to that, and so that's very much a part of this story. Um, and I feel like God's really shaping me to be a neighbor. And so things for me really began to escalate in December of 2012. We had just had our second daughter, Emmy, and um, it was my first night home from the hospital after bringing her into the world and all of just the work that that involves and being hooked up to an IV and, you know, just uncomfortable in a hospital bed. And anyways, if anyone's ever had a baby, you know what I'm talking about. So um, anyways, first night home from the hospital, um, our two-year-old at the time, Aubrey, was away spending the night with her grandparents. And so we had like peace and quiet. Um, the baby was sleeping, I was finally back in my own bed, I was in my own home, I ate a hamburger, like things were good and I was ready to go to sleep. And then I heard Back Hair and his friends. Back Hair was my neighbor and obviously that's not his real name. <laughs> he um, was this just kind of husky, burly man-child teenager that lived um, right next door to us and his driveway and his front door was kind of on the side of the house and it was maybe 15 feet from our bedroom window and so um, back here loved to be outside in the front yard he always hung out on the front porch with all of his friends and he never wore a shirt and he was covered in hair so that's why I called him back here and um, anyways man this kid had just been a pain in my side for like a year and a half, like the whole time we'd been li living there, I'd look out the window and go, he's out there, he's mowing the yard, he doesn't have his shirt on, what's wrong with this guy? So anyway, so I'm ready to sleep and all this stuff and just back here and his friends are at it. And they weren't bad kids by any means, um, they were just kids that were like 15 feet from my bedroom window on the night that I so desperately wanted sleep. And so, anyways, at that moment, I just freaked out and, you know, just boldly declared I couldn't take it anymore. We had to move. We got to get out of here. Can't stand these people. Let's go. And so, we put our house on the market. For sale sign goes in the front yard and the house begins to show. And a um, couple weeks into it, my rational mind kind of started to catch up with my postpartum mind and realized, and, and my, the sweet rational voice of my husband, who was just like an unwilling passenger on the crazy train, <laughs> began to break through and we realized we've, now's probably not the best time to sell our house. Um, just too much of life is going on. And um, so I had a great idea. I was like, I know what we can do. Let's just build a really big fence. Let's, um, we're going to build a privacy gate. Let's get the window company out here and we're going to get some double pane windows to help just kind of insulate the noise. And so the window guy comes out and gets his torch blower, you know, to kind of go, listen, I'm heating this to 160 degrees. Can you feel it on the other side? So we sit through the whole presentation. And um, anyways, we, we take our house off the market and we do it all. Um, build the big fence, put up the privacy gate. 
And a couple of months later, it really began to set in and occur to me what kind of message I had just sent to our neighborhood. Um, first message was, we don't want to live here, we're moving. And then the second message was, oh, never mind, we'll stay, but we're going to build a really big fence because we don't want to see you and we don't want to hear you. And that just began to eat at me. Um, and it was in that moment that God really began to speak into my heart that, um, you know, God's word says that we are to love God and love our neighbor and do it in that order. And I was just like failing miserably. And so it was definitely a growing opportunity. So I began to ask, who's my neighbor? And so that idea of who's my neighbor took us, again, Weston was just kind of going along with me in this journey of exploration. Um, I mean, it took us to um, a community renewal friendship house in the Highland neighborhood, working with some kids there, um, something that we've done now for over two years. Um, brought us downtown to um, kind of work and serve with the homeless community and just, I, I guess what I really was wanting to know was just, um, just better understand people around me and just be next to people and be, be better at just being with people. And so we're actually downtown um, over at First Methodist serving meals to the hub one night and um, a whole family was with us. And um, so doing something like that with a two-year-old and a newborn is kind of difficult. So we like strap the newborn in the stroller. She's stationary, pretty contained. And we send our two-year-old Aubrey off on a mission. I got to give her a sticker book and I say, hey, just go, go give out some stickers to some of these new friends and have a great time. And um, anyway, so she was on a mission and loving it. And there was one gentleman in particular, just kind of, you know, clothes were dirty. He, his body language said, I'm not here to make friends. I'm just kind of here to get a meal and um, get on about my business. And um, he really wasn't there to socialize. And so after he was done with his dinner, he gets up to leave. And Aubrey notices that he left without a sticker. She, she missed one. And so she chases after him with all of her heart gets her biggest Minnie Mouse sticker but, and just smacks it on his rear end. <laughs> He's like on the way out the door, just smacks it right on his butt. And this guy's rocking a severe plumber's crack, by the way. So just a place I wouldn't have like gone with a 10-foot pole. She just goes right for it. And I realized this person's my neighbor. Um, also figuring out who my neighbor was because of the work that... Uh, my husband and I do, we had the opportunity to go to Africa and spend some time in Rwanda with some school children and their families, and um, which is just an incredible experience. Being there in Rwanda was really interesting. I had red hair at the time, like bright red hair, and I'm about as pasty white as a girl can get, um, and I have blue eyes, and I stuck out like a sore thumb in East Africa. And these school kids were so curious. The fact that I looked so different really piqued their curiosity, and it drew them in closer. It didn't do that with the adults, but with the kids, they just came in close. They wanted me to take off my sunglasses so they could look into my eyes. They'd like poke at my freckles, you know, like freckles are interesting. Um, just touch my hair. And they were especially interested in this like skin area under the elbow, like the elbow flab area. And, you know, I just have little hands just on me, just, you know, kind of touching and feeling and, you know, just very interested in something that was different. And I felt so special. So we wound up selling the house um, for, for other reasons. We, we did some work to get along with our neighbors. We wound up selling the house and we moved into a new neighborhood. And a new house means new neighbors in a new neighborhood. And um, I knew that I wanted to do it differently. And um, this was my opportunity to kind of start off on the right foot. Well, we met our new neighbors a little earlier than we had expected. It was actually move-in day. So like day one. And um, the movers are unloading the truck. I'm sitting inside eating a salad from Jason's Deli. And um, one of my neighbors bursts through the front door and she's frantic. I mean, arms flailing, distress is clearly written over her face. And um, turns out that our moving truck, in an effort to unload the piano or something, had pulled out into the middle of our dead end street, blocking off all traffic. 
in and out of the street. And she was trying to get to the airport. She was in a big rush, and we had her pinned in. So we go out and do a little bit of crisis management, get the truck moved. She's on her way. And I'm sitting there going, it, this is like day one, and I've already ruined it. I'm the new back hair. <laughs> like, this is not what I wanted. So our new normal for our family is really that, um, you know, in the same way that I felt so special when those kids were just reaching out and touching me and just wanting to explore me because I was different, um, I want to be someone and I want our family to be a group of people that reaches out and touches others. And so we do that through neighboring. Um, which is kind of a stupid term, but either way, I mean, we like take walks and just up and down our street and ask people our names. We're within walking distance to Starbucks. And so we just walk there and, you know, wave at the cars that drive by. Um, we put a sign out in the front yard um, saying that we're having an ice cream party at our house and inviting the neighborhood to come over. And um, we just want to reach out and touch others, bring people together to have conversations, just like what we're doing tonight to just get to know each other, understand each other better, because relationships are messy. Um, neighbors can be hard and difficult sometimes. And so um, in our house and on our block, we just come together and we eat ice cream. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>